Okay, I'm very delighted to welcome you all in our today's lecture. Today we will have uh, a critical introduction to the novel Seize the Day by Sonia. Here you can see that is the title page. Seize the Day. Now, uh, you know, in, in one of the lectures, actually, we talked about a little bit of his life, Song Bello. So today, that's actually, I don't want to go through I mean, his biography, since we don't have enough time. So I'll just jump to the main issues that. Okay, okay, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the first item that actually we're going to focus on, that is the term called carpidium. Have you ever heard of this word, carpidium? Carpidium. Huh? Just look at the screen. This is the phrase, carpidium. This carpidium, the, uh, I mean, if you please uh, just uh, mute your microphone, I mean, that will help us a lot. If you don't need it, just mute the microphone, and when you need it, then you just unmute it, and then you can talk to me. All right. Now, uh, Carpidium, actually, this phrase first, it was introduced by uh, Horace. And in English, the Latin phrase Carpidium is often translated as Seize the Day. So the title of the novel Seize the Day and Carpidium, that is the Latin translation. Actually, this Seize the Day, it came from the Latin phrase Carpidium. And this translation implies that a person should act only for today, almost ignoring one's future. Since the day means that means you have to think about only the present. So present, staying in the present, that is the reality. And you have to try to get the opportunity, to grab the opportunity of that day. That is living in the present. And you ignore your future. Just think about the present day. So therefore, this translation is not entirely correct. Uh, more precisely, carpe literally means plaque, or referencing the plucking of fruit. That means to collect the fruit. The full phrase, carpe diem, uh, means plack the day, trusting as little as possible in the future. That means you, uh, you will just think about the future, not think about the future, you will only concentrate on the present day. Now, the more precise translation of carpe diem means plack the day while it is right, or embrace the day instead of simply believing that it will all work out in the future. So you have to embrace the day and don't think that your future or the future plan that you are doing, that, that will be, I mean, uh, I mean, you'll be able to implement that. So instead of thinking about the future and also instead of regretting about the past, just think about the present. So that is the idea of carpeting. So uh, this carpeting also actually, uh, this theme also lies in Epicureanism. If you can recall that in our course, uh, introduction to philosophy, we talked about the Epicure, I mean the Epicurean, the Epicureans, and the idea of Epicureanism as a philosophy. So, and this philosophy in which actually Horace, the Greek, uh, Greek writer, actually he believed in it and he was inspired by this idea of Epicureanism. Now I will explain Epicureanism, in, I mean, uh, it's a very short manner. Here it says, Epicureanism is a philosophy based upon the teachings of Epicurus. This philosophy, which originated around 307 BC of Christ, was naturalist in nature and attacked notions of superstition and divine, in, divine intervention. Epicurus believed that pleasure is the greatest good, and the way that people attain pleasure is to live a modest life, gaining knowledge about the world and its limits. So you see, the Epicureans actually they are not only thinking about the present, but they're thinking about the present. That is, you can see, it's very practical. That means the greatest good, the good that will be for you. So that is the greatest good. And the way that people attain pleasure is to live a modest life. That means you have to live, in, you have to live a very modest life. Now, gaining knowledge about the world and its limits. So also, you have to gain knowledge about the world and you have to know the limits that till how far you can go so if you know the limits about your knowledge about the world and about yourself then you can lead a good life and the greatest good is the greatest pleasure 
or you can see the pleasure is the greatest good. That means your pleasure of clinching the uh, present time, not thinking about the future, that is the idea of Epicurus. And our since the day, this idea goes with this idea of Carbidon, because we'll see that, that the, the, the main character, which is, uh, that his name is Tommy Wilhelm, we'll find that he will also think about the present time, his present situation. Okay. So he is not planning his future in that way. Only he's thinking about the present. And as a result, he had to suffer a lot because he only believed in the Carpidium. Now, if you just go through the plot overview, then uh, I'll just read through some of it from here. Uh, here you say, Tommy Willem is a man in his mid 40s. So he's in his mid 40s and he's living temporarily in a hotel. The name of the hotel is Hotel Gloriana. And in that hotel, he He's not the only person that is living there. His father is also there. His father is a retired physician. He was a doctor and he was a very successful person. And financially, he is very much capable. Uh, but our protagonist, Tommy Wilhelm, he is living in that hotel. Why? You see, all the people, those who are living in this hotel, Gloriana, almost all of them, they're retiring. So you can say that they are retired persons. But only uh, Tommy Wilhelm, this protagonist, he's in his mid force, but he's still he's living there because he doesn't have a regular job. So that's actually he's living in that hotel. And he's out of place from the beginning, living in a hotel filled with elderly retirees and continuing throughout the novel to be a figure of isolation amidst crowds. So you see, we can see that he is living in that hotel as someone actually who is out of place because all the people there are elderly people. They're aged and they're all the, all of them, they're retired. The only person he is that he is comparatively he is younger than those, those people who are living in that hotel. Now, and this novel, uh, the, the duration of the play, we can find that this only uh, will come to know about the one day, the single day, what is happening. That means the 24 hours, what is happening with the protagonist, with our hero, Tommy Willem. So we'll come to know about that. So in that sense, you can also say that, I um, mean, this one day, uh, it's a kind of day of reckoning for Tommy Wilhelm. Now, Tommy is, uh, at the very beginning, we can see in the very, very first chapter of the novel, so Tommy is descending in the hotel elevator, that means the lift, and on his way to meet his father for breakfast. So, uh, I mean, he and his father in the hotel Gloriana, uh, I mean, almost every day they have breakfast together. So just, just like the other day, he's also going to his father's uh, father's room, uh, I mean, to his father's place to have breakfast with him. So however, uh, I mean, but in this morning, he has a kind of foreboding. Foreboding means to have a bad feeling that something bad might happen. So he was feeling like that. I mean, when actually he was going to his father to have breakfast. And we can see that from, from the flashback, if you just go to the flashback, and also uh, there is, uh, uh, I mean, it has been mentioned in the in the novel that he has recently been fired from his job as a salesman. So he was a salesman, and he has lost his job, and also he didn't continue his education. So he discontinued his education in the college. So he is a drop. You can see he's a dropout, and he has two children, but recently. He, I mean, he has been separated from his wife. So there is a separation going on between him and his wife. That means they don't have a good relationship. And he is a man on the brink of financial disaster. That means he simply, he is a broke and he doesn't have any money right at this moment. Now, Tommy had just given over the last of his savings to the fraudulent Dr. Tumkin. So there is a character in the novel and he is called Dr. Tumkin. And this Dr. Tumkin actually, Tumkin is very deceptive, you can say. and. He's a fraud, and it is not clear about his character. In the, I mean, in the novel, at a, I mean, at one point, actually, he acts like a father figure uh, to uh, father figure to this. I mean, to the hero, and at the same time, actually, he we find them. We, we find that he is trying to cheat the. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, the character of Tom Wilhelm. So, and he has promised to knowingly invest in the commodities market. So he inspired the protagonist, the hero of this novel, to invest money in the stock, in the, in the stock market. And, to, uh, and our, our, our hero, Tommy Wilhelm, actually he didn't believe him at the first, 
but still he feel he felt very enticed and he was tempted and then after listening to him then he invested his last 700 dollar i mean in this market i mean in the stock market he invested that that amount of money and dr tomkin actually he gave him the advice and together uh, i mean dr tomkin and tom Willem together both of them actually they invested in, in an amount of money in the stock market now and uh, <coughs> so now we can see that financially actually he simply can't support himself at this point now in the first three chapters uh, as a reader we will find that that tommy as he talks with his father dr adler so his father's name is dr adler and he's a doctor and he he was having conversation with him and who sees his son as a failure in every sense of food so you see he thinks that his son is a failure but problem is that uh, our character tommy he asks for help financial help to his father several several times on several occasions but every time actually his father refused him to give him money and actually he didn't want to assist him in any way so he refused any kind of support uh, either emotionally or financially whatever it is so it is also within this beginning chapter that the flashbacks begin the flashbacks highlight among other things tom is meeting with the duplicious maurice venice and maurice venice actually he's an agent and uh, our character tommy he had a desire to be an actor in the hollywood and he wanted to be a hero so that's why actually he his parents they told him not to go to hollywood but he didn't listen to them he went to hollywood he found this morris vanis this duplicious man he is an agent actually he's not a real agent but he talked to him and this morris vanis actually he told him that yes he can work i mean in the in the film and then he went to the hollywood and he spent a lot of time to be a hero but actually he couldn't he couldn't be a hero. He uh, he gave some screen test, and this is screen test actually they didn't come out successfully. So that's why. But he was accepted as a I mean some as in some movies actually he got the side roles, but not as a hero. So his dream to be a hero, uh, to be a part of the Hollywood actually he didn't. Uh, I mean it, it, it wasn't successful. And already I have mentioned that he didn't continue his. He didn't continue his education because he dropped his education and he went to Hollywood uh, just to be a uh, hero in the film. Now, next, now in uh, we can see that the chapters that follows focus on Tommy's encounters and conversations with Dr. Tum Dr. Tumkin. Now he is having conversation in Dr. Tumkin, a seemingly fraudulent and questionable psychologist. Now, Dr. Tumkin he says that he is a psychologist and he always talks big about himself and and sometimes Tommy actually he didn't believe him but he still he was enticed he was tempted to uh, I mean to talk to him because you see he felt deprived because his father didn't care about him so he needed emotional support and Dr. Tomkin occasionally actually gave him some emotional support so that's why actually he was fond of him in one way or another and and uh, and Dr. Tomkin always gives advice to, uh, to Tommy, I mean the hero, and thus provides the assistance he had looked for from his father. So whether Tomkin is fraudulent and questionable and, and questionable as a psychologist, and whether he is a liar or a charlatan, that is, he is someone who is fake, but that is a question that is constantly being posed to us. So um, as a reader, actually, whenever we read the text, we always try to think that what kind of person he is. He looks like a father, but at the same time, he is a cheat. So that is very confusing. So Tomkin claims to be, uh, and you see Mr. Tomkin, I told you that he always talks uh, something big about himself. So he says that he is a poet, he is a killer, uh, he is a member of a Detroit powerful gang, as well as claiming a number of other positions and titles. So he always says that I'm this, I'm that, and, uh, and that is very confusing. Though uh, our character, uh, Tommy Wilhelm, he didn't believe in all of this, but still, he feels tempted to listen to him. So despite his lies, he gives Tommy garments of truth that become significant in the novel. I have and for Tommy and, and for Tommy, that means that the hero of the novel. Moreover, Tommy entrusts Tomkin with the last of his savings to invest in the commodities market, since Tomkin claims a certain stock market expertise. So you see, Mr. Tomkin, uh, I mean this fraudulent character, or 
that we see he's very deceptive he says that he has some expertise in stock market that means he knows about the stock market and thus he advised and also he allude the uh, the hero of the novel Tommy that okay you can invest your money I, I know lots of things about uh, stock markets so you don't need to worry about it just invest the money in the stock market and uh, Tommy uh, and Tommy William actually he listened to him and he invested his last seven hundred dollars in the stock market now the rest of the novel consists of Tommy and Dr. Sunkin <laughs> traveling back and forth to and from the stock market, meeting several characters along the way. So uh, several times they met on several occasions and they, were, they talked about the stock market and about the price of commodities and how is it going in the stock market. So they talked about this. The novel finally illustrates Tommy's terrible loss in the commodities in which Tomkin has invested Tommy's money. Tommy has lost all of his savings, but he still has the monetary demands of his family to meet. Now, this is the problem here in the novel, you can see that Though uh, Tommy Wilhelm actually he invested all his money and Dr. Tomkin suddenly actually he disappeared because the stock market crashed and uh, in the stock market Tommy Wilhelm the hero of the novel he lost all of his money but you see he had he has two children and also he though actually he's separated restrained from his wife but still his wife is demanding money to take care of their kids but Tommy Wilhelm actually he didn't have any money to give to his yeah, wife and yeah. trust in his own life. So that was the problem. Yeah, he, was, he was in a huge financial crisis at this point. Now, furthermore, what happened that Mr. Tomkin, he disappeared. And after an attempt to look for Tomkin in his room at, at the hotel, the novella came to a close with three climaxes. So there we can see three climaxes. Mm -hmm. Climax oh. is the, the highest point of the novel, where actually we see the Tension. Uh, we see this. Uh, we see the tension exactly. Yeah. So here you see two minor and one large. So three climaxes. The first thing is that mm -hmm. there is the final confrontation with his father in the masses in, in, the, in, the, in the masses room of the hotel in which Tommy is denied any assistance one last time as he stands before his before his father. So you see, Tommy went to the masses room in the hotel. Uh, uh, and he asked his father for the last time when he lost all his money in the in the stock stock market. So he asked his father to help him financially for the last time. But you see, even at this stage, when his son actually he was badly in need of financial support, his father rejected him and he denied him. He said that no, I'll not give you any penny. Afterward, Tommy has a loud and almost revving uh, revving fight with his wife on the on the telephone in which he claims to be suffocating and unable to breathe. So unable to breathe. So you see, uh, he, uh, and he left the hotel after having this discussion with his father. And then he went to a telephone booth and he called his wife. And then his wife, again, actually, she was demanding money. And at that point, Tommy Wilhelm, our hero, he said that he was suffocating and he simply can't breathe. So you see, he is in a very suffocating situation where he can't breathe because financially he's challenged. He simply didn't have any money, but everybody's asking for money, his family members, and at the same time, his father, he didn't want to help him. And, uh, and, uh, and also you see the Dr. Tumkin who, who allowed him, enticed him to invest money in the stock market, he, uh, he has also vanished. So he couldn't find any help from any, any corner. So that was very frustrating. So full of rage, he exits out onto Broadway where he believes to see Dr. Tumkin at a funeral nearby. So when he finished his, uh, I mean, conversation with his wife over phone, then he went to, onto the Broadway, and Broadway means that's the place, or you can see the street, and there he, f he saw a funeral. A funeral procession is going on there, and uh, Tommy thought that he saw Dr. Tumkin, I mean, in the crowd. So he calls out to Tumkin, but receives no reply. So he calls out his name, Dr. Tumkin, several times, but he didn't get any reply. So suddenly he is swept, swept in by a rush of people and finds himself carried into a crowd within the chapel where the funeral is taking place. So you see, where actually he was uh, going in, in, into the fun funeral, uh, funeral procession and he was, uh, and he thought that he saw Dr. Tumkin. So he couldn't get out of the crowd and with that crowd, he was carried into the chapel, the synagogue, the prayer house of the Jewish people. 
And there he found that there was a funeral was going on there. It was taking place in the chapel, in the synagogue. And he found that there was a, there was a dead person there because it was a funeral. So certainly there was a dead person and everybody was there to just uh, to offer their condolences in the chapel. So it is here that the final climax comes because Tommy finds himself before the body of a dead stranger, unable to break away, and he begins to cry and weep. So this is the last scene where in the novel. So you see that when he went into the synagogue, he saw this dead person and he didn't know him. But you see, look at the situation. If you just compare the situation of the, the Tommy Wilhelm, and if you just compare um, compare his situation with a dead body, so you can see our Tommy Wilhelm, he is a living dead. But in the chapel, in the synagogue, there is a dead body. So, so in a sense, that symbolizes that, uh, symbolizes his death. That means financially, emotionally, and in every way, actually, he is done. His career is gone. He doesn't have a job. He doesn't have a family. He, didn't, he, do, he doesn't get any help from his father. And even he doesn't get help, anything from the person actually trusted him. Uh, I mean, the Dr. Thumpkin. So he's a living dead. And there is a dead person in the field. So at one point, what happened that he really just pulls of emotion and cries with all his heart. So he went to the dead body. And then he started crying, though he, he doesn't know anybody from there, but he started crying because that was the emotional outburst. It is said that the book ends. Other people at the funeral are confused as to who he is, wondering how close he had been to the deceased. The deceased is a stranger, but Tommy, however, is left in this happy oblivion of tears. So you see the people who are in the synagogue in the chapel, they were very confused that who is this person? Is he a very close relative to this dead person? Then why is he sobbing? Why is he crying in this way? So you can see the, I mean, the situation of, of uh, I mean, of, of this character, that how actually he suffered uh, because of his financial crisis and of his uh, financial, uh, I mean, emotional deprivation. Now here, I would like to read the last paragraph from the book, uh, and then I'll explain it to you. Uh, from the novel, actually, I'm, I'm just reading it. And the last, the very, uh, the very last words of the novel, here, here it goes, it says, the flowers and lights fused ecstatically in Willem's, in, in Willem's blind, red eyes. The heavy sea-like music came up to his lips. It poured into him where he had hidden himself in the center of the crowd by a great and happy oblivion of tears. He heard it and sang deeper than solid, through torn sobs and cries toward the consummation of his heart's ultimate need. So uh, almost every commentator of, I mean, the critique uh, on Seize the Day has seen the conclusion as a reverb. So you see, it's a kind of reverb. It's, it's, it's not like that it's kind of complete destruction of the person of Tommy Wilhelm. So with this kind of thing, I mean, here actually, I mean, he's sobbing and he's just uh, giving an outburst of his emotion. So Kittick says that maybe he will have a reverb or he will have I have a kind of revival of his personality I mean, from this part. So though the novel ends there, but we can expect that the Tommy Wilhelm will, will go forward and he will learn from his mistakes and then he will have a new way in his life. So, uh, and some critics, some, some critics, they say that it's, it's, it's I mean, Tommy Wilhelm is, I mean, he's a kind of victim hero. That means he is taking all the burdens on, on himself and he's been victimized by all the other characters. So surrounding him, so it's like that. But some say that Tommy's this uh, this masochistic acceptance of his role as a victim. Some critics actually they don't believe in it. They, it. they think that it ends in hope for a new life. That there is a new life and there is hope. Still hope is there. So the final scene uh, in is one in which uh, he drowns metaphorically, but it is also a symbolic river out of water. So it's not a complete I mean destruction of uh, of Tommy Wilhelm as a person. So it's a, he is drowning metaphorically, but actually it shows a kind of reverb of his uh, reverb of Tommy. Wilhelm. And uh, in a sense, we can see that in Tommy's capacity for grief, I mean, at least he can express his grief. That is the thing that we can find it here. So there is the possibility of his freedom. It, still, we can expect that he will get his freedom out of this situation 
at one point of his life. So that is, uh, I mean, critically, if we just take a look at the plot, that is the storyline. So if I just want to give us, uh, I mean, the summary of the story is like that, that Tommy Wilhelm is the hero of the novel. So he lost his job, but before that he went to Hollywood and he wanted to be a part of, to be a hero in the Hollywood, but his dream actually, it, it never came true. Then he started doing a job and as a salesman, he lost his job. Then he has two children and he has a wife. So now he's separated from his wife and he simply doesn't have any money to support his family and his two sons. But his wife is always demanding cash from him that give us money. And at one point when he met Dr. Tumkin, Dr. Tumkin, he is a person who was also living in the same hotel with his father in the Hotel Gloria, uh, Gloriana. And in the Hotel Gloriana, he also met this Dr. Tumkin. And Dr. Tumkin, he supported him mentally. Sometimes he gave him advice. But at the same time, Dr. Tumkin, he was very deceptive and deceitful. So he uh, instigated, you can say, instigated Tommy Wilhelm to invest his last, his last $700 to uh, $700, um, uh, I mean, in the stock market. And he listened to him. He invested his last $700 in the stock market. The stock market, it crashed. He lost all his money. Dr. Tumkin, after, when he came to know about the loss, he completely disappeared and he didn't contact anymore with uh, Tommy Wilhelm. Then when uh, Tommy Wilhelm actually, he, he became completely broke, penniless. He went to his father, asked for his help, and he asked for his, uh, for his father the financial help, but his father rejected him. He declined. He didn't want to help him in any way, either financially or emotionally. Then uh, out of grief or, or, or out of anger, he came out of the hotel. He went uh, onto the Broadway. There, uh, uh, then he had a conversation with his wife over phone. His wife again asked for money. And then he said that he was suffocating. He couldn't breathe. He couldn't breathe and then he finished the conversation with his wife. Then he went on to Broadway. There he found a, there he saw a funeral procession. And amidst the funeral procession, he thought that he saw the image or he saw Dr. Tumkin. So he started calling his name, Dr. Tumkin, Dr. Tumkin, but Dr. Tumkin didn't have to apply. Then uh, he went to the crowd and he was carried out in the crowd and he carried out, carried out with the crowd in the chapel. And in the chapel, he saw that there was a kind of funeral uh, service was going on there. There was a dead person. He didn't know that person, but seeing that dead body, he became very much emotional that he went to the dead body and, and he touched the coffin and he started crying. And all the people who were in the synagogue or the chapel, they got surprised that, well, I mean, did he know this dead person? Or was he relative? Why is he crying? So he was sobbing literally. And, and we can see that this sobbing or this outburst of emotion that can be a revert or that can be that can usher the freedom uh, for this uh, i mean for our character uh, tommy wilhelm so that's it about the whole plot and uh, critically i try to analyze the plot uh, you can also come to know about all these things from your uh, text that i've already shared with you on your facebook group so you can find the detail there from there you, uh, i will ask you to go through all these uh, items like the tone, the genre, and also uh, about what's up with the title. I've already explained a little bit about the title, that what is it about? So you can read about the title, that why actually he's calling it Seize the Day. And also you can, uh, the, you can also uh, have your critical, cr critical analysis about the ending, why ending is, is very important here. And also you can know about the setting. His writing style is also very important that what kind of writing style actually he has in, employed here in this novel. So we can also come out, uh, talk, talk about it. And also uh, symbol and also uh, the motif and all these things actually I will ask you to focus on. I have put all this stuff in the handout, okay? So you can get all these things from your handout. Uh, uh, that's it. Uh, from my part now if you have any question you can ask me we have five more minutes in this last five minutes i would like to take some questions from you
Saul, if you have any comment or opinion for me. Do you have any question? Fine. Fine. Uh, Tushar, no, sir. Tanjir, are you here? Yes, sir. <coughs> sir. Okay. Yes, yes, go, please. Tanjir, do you have any question? Sir, I'm sure you can't load the load. Sir, I'm sure you can't load the load. Okay, no problem, no problem. You can go through it on YouTube. Um, you can watch it on YouTube and at the same time, uh, please go through that PDF file that I've already shared. Uh, I mean, on your Facebook group. So everything is there. You will find everything. I mean, all the things that I've already mentioned, um, uh, points by points, I've explained all those things there. Okay? So you don't need to worry about it, even if you miss uh, I mean, the first part of the lecture. Uh, anyone else? Any other comments? How about the girls? Are they with us or they have left? Sumaya Tasneem? Sumaya, do you have any questions? Um, no, sir. I think it's more important Okay, no problem. You can ask me, I mean, when you go through the text, then you can ask me later, no problem. Uh, Risalat, are you here? Risalat? This is here, Rasi, sir. Okay, that's great. Good to hear from you, Risalat. So, uh, I hope that you have understood the plot. Assistant, assistant. Okay. All right. Sir, a two. Nizi Porto, sir. Pure, sir. Yes, yes. Go, go sir, through the, uh, I understand it. At least you can go through the summary. Uh, then yes, it will help you to understand. If you don't have the group, then go through the summary. So it will help you to yes, understand, sir, the, understand the discussion. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, anything else from any of you? How about Ritu? Ritu, can you hear me? Do you have any questions? No, sir. Okay, that's good. So, uh, uh, did you understand the storyline? I mean, I'm just asking all of you. Did you understand the storyline? Yes, yes. Sorry, sir, I can't hear. I'm asking you that. Did you understand the storyline? That the story. Did you understand the story? Yes, sir. Okay. So if you understand the story, then it will help you to understand the rest of the discussion. I hope so. Yes, sir. Okay, that's great. So, any other question or opinion from any of you? All right then, uh, in that case, if you don't have any question or opinion, I would like to conclude today's discussion. And I'd like to see you or talk to you in our next lecture, inshallah. Okay. So until then, stay safe, stay well, and I will meet you uh, very soon. So, uh, uh, and I'm sending you the link for this uh, lecture. So you can just go to uh, WhatsApp group, uh, sorry, I mean, you can go to your a messenger group and from there you can find the link for the second lecture and then you can join. Okay? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank